तो हम नेक्स्ट इज योर आर्गो मर्चेंट शिप सो दिस एम वी आर्गो मर्चेंट इट इज अवेंटी थ्री ईयर ओल्ड लाइब्रेरियन रजिस्टर्ड ऑयल टैंकर इन दिसंबर फॉर दोज ऑफ यू डोंट नो लाइब्रेरियन रजिस्टर्ड लाइक देर आर सम फ्लैग ऑफ कन्वीनियंस सम फ्लैग विच आर लाइक इजी टू रजिस्टर एंड वेरी लेस फॉर्मेलिटी एंड लेस चार्जेस नो मच इंस्पेक्शन लाइक Sir, to, Sir, was also registered in Liberia. Okay. So, Liberian registered oil tanker, and with these flag vessels, you cannot expect very high standard of vessels. And the ship ran aground again at six a.m. on fifteen December. It was twenty-four miles off course, twenty-nine nautical miles southeast of Nantucket Island. captain george and his crew including two inexperienced helmsmen were successfully evacuated but high winds and 10 foot seas precluded refloating the vessel so you know like it is a common sense like if any ship is grounded it is like this and this is a seabed so this is the water level and after some time when the water level rises this again is the seabed the water level has risen so the ship will float automatically now if the ship is not floating then we can ask for tug assistance we call the tugs and tugs will tie the rope in this type it depends on the seabed if it is rocky we will don't do all these things and we are try to refloat her only so this one type of incident happened with me also so of course again calling the tugs and all will also take lot of time and the salvage operation contracts took for us it took at least 24 hours and then the salvage master has to come on board and check what are the things sometimes they have to also do the underwater survey to check if there is no problem if uh, because our place it had rocky areas rock, rocky place so we call the tug and we take this uh, ship and try to refloat but if the weather is too rough the tugs cannot come alongside or the ship cannot refloat in this case so high winds and 10 foot sea very rough weather so tugs in tugs not able to come alongside and that's why there is uh, the ship was not able to refloat so ship was uh, still grounded and it grounded on uh, 15 december and after two days it began to turn because of sea and all then after one week on 21st it split apart because of the very heavy weather and grounding and dumped more than 7 million gallons of oil into the atlantic a fortunate shift in winds carried the crew away from nantucket and its fishing industry and the disaster would remain the largest single tanker spill in us history until the exxon valdez 1989 so of course everybody knows the biggest spill was exxon valdez but before that this one is there then next is amoco cardis just as you can see again the tanker is split into two the tanker amoco cardis ran aground off the coast of brittany on 16th march 1978 so again following a steering failure over a period of 2 weeks the entire cargo of around 2 like 23000 tons of light iranian and arabian crude oil and 4000 tons of bunker fuel was released into heavy seas much of the oil quickly formed a vicious water in oil immersion increasing the volume of pollutant by up to 5 times so oily mixture water is multiplying and it's causing lot of volume and 
by the end of April, it was collided uh, a ground in March and after one and a half month, end of April, and immersion had contaminated 320 kilometers of Brittany coastline. So still it is quite less for two like 23,000. We have seen coastlines of thousands of kilometer getting affected with these types of spills and had extended as far as as Channel Islands. At the time, the Amogo Cardage incident resulted in the largest loss of marine life ever recorded after an oil spill. Then the next is Exxon Valdez. You know, one of the biggest oil spill which caused the full Exxon Valdez had so many ships in one of the biggest Exxon Mobil and petroleum company and it had to close down all its company just because of this incident it was such a big incident so what happened in this exxon valdez in march 23 1989 the exxon valdez left the port of valdez alaska very cold weather and you can see with so many tugs bound for long beach california with 53 million gallons of crude ho bay crude oil on board at four minutes after midnight on march 24 the ship struck Bly Reef, a well-known navigation hazard in Alaska's Prince William Sound. The impact of collision tore open the ship's hull, causing some 11 million gallons of crude oil to spill into the water. The Exxon Valdez oil slick covered 1,300 miles of coastlines and killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of seabirds, otters, seals, and whales. So you see it's uh, near this Bly Reef near Alaska and uh, you can see as I was telling you that thousands of miles of coastline are, uh, is affected. So this is why the oil pollution is the most uh, hazardous and dangerous thing because it's affecting thousands of kilometers of seabirds and uh, animals, birds water animals, then fishery, fishing trade, vegetation, plantation, natural, coral reefs, tourism, then your water, in, it's connected to the rivers, navigation channels, so many things are affected. It's a huge, huge loss. And then to remove with heavy weather, this type of oil, remove the ship, repair it or take it, like you saw in Wakashio and the other ships, they ran apart. Now, once the ship is apart, it's much more, most difficult to refloat and take it. And then even if you refloat, then who will pay the cost? It will be more than total loss. So people prefer to either bombard it or sink it if it is possible. So the company will go in loss and then they have to pay billions and billions of dollars to clear and get the effect. Still, after doing everything, it will take 30, 40, 50 years to recover to the same state. Sir, so company pay karti hai insurance company, sir? So about the payment, first thing is the owner is responsible for uh, all this. Ship owner has to pay for everything. Now how the ship owner pays, like here as we told, Exxon, the ship owner had to pay. Now ship owner had to pay, but the money so much that the company got bankrupt. So after this incident, there were some uh, P and I clubs and uh, some funds and some ways of arranging the funds. So there is a uh, civil liability convention where they form a fund uh, for uh, what you call spillage due to bunkers. And then uh, we have uh, nowadays some tie ups with some uh, what you call like insurance, every country like China and US especially, they have a requirement that the ship and the company which is coming in their territory, they should have a, a tie up with a third party who will come and do the rescue or containment of spill in case of any spill. So like SPRO or something. So the payment has to be done by owners, but uh, there are some different ways it, they can go through with other uh, conventions. They have a fund with civil liability or they have a tie up. 
so like you have if you have uh, you are in a hospital and you have to spend 10 lakhs but if you have a health insurance every year you are paying whatever 5000 6000 premium with that you can have a 10 lakh coverage same way like here they have a third party agreement with some dollars and uh, in case of oil spill like they have coverage up to 3 million dollar or like that they will come and immediately the rescue will be there